Hello everyone. I'm really happy to be recording another Paint Calm. Let me just check what number this is that I'm recording. So this will be number 18, I do think. As she checks in, that, yes, this will be number 18 on the 4th of October, which means that I felt like doing something a little bit autumn based. So let's have a look at what we're going to do today on, on our paint calm. Here we go. So I've got this lovely picture that was from, you can find them all over the place. Um, I'm I can't remember whether it was Unsplash or Pixabay. I have a few that I printed off ages ago. And um, like a ninny, I forgot to write where I got them from. But, um, yeah, it's a, a lovely autumn. I think they call it a maple leaf. This was my let's have a start and a go that I haven't quite finished because I didn't do a background. And part of that was because I decided I wanted to do it a little bit bigger and have it take up more of the page. So, um, there we go. Um, I'm sure that you can find um, in your own time or draw one for yourself, um, you know, uh, a maple leaf, basically. So that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to move that one out of the way now. Bring this over a bit. I'm going to be, oh, this is a five by seven piece of 300 GSM watercolour paper. I, I don't know what make it was. It, it was just a, a huge um, 50 sheets together in a, a pack um, that I got from TMU and they work perfectly well. But I'm going to be using my blocks, um, giant pans today. So I have got burnt sienna out. I've got what's called their blocks red. I've also got the rose lake. I have the blocks yellow, slightly contaminated, but never mind. And the cobalt blue. So those are the colours that I have pulled out to play with. I've got my mixing tray here. As you can see, it's got something on it. Who knows what, but it's fine. It, it won't cause me too many problems. I'm not that fussy. And then I've also got um, a Derwin Ink Tent pencil in Shiraz out. Um, to maybe put some details like these um, lines here. But I just really quite like the idea of doing these wonderful colours today. Now, how shall I do this? I think I might. Let's see if we can spread them out like that. And then I can be more in the middle with that. I need some water. There's my water. And we need some brushes i'm not quite sure what we'll need yet so i'm going to pull out my favorite escoda perlas i've got a 12 a 10 and an 8 i don't think i need anything more than that okay well i think we're set then my first decision is whether to paint the leaf first or the background first. But I think I'm going to do the leaf first. OK, so let's go with what one should we go with? Size 10. I remember when I was first starting out that um, there were several artists that um, mentioned that you know, to use um, as big a brush as you can. And if you've got a brush that's got a point, then you should be able to do an awful lot with just the one brush. So let's see how we go, shall we? <laughs> 
Okay, I'm going to start with my yellow. And let's get that in the tip here. And I want quite a bit of yellow at the bottom here. And many of you might have noticed I actually use quite a lot of water in my paintings. And that's because I like the paint to um, do its thing properly. And for me, that means using quite a bit of water. So there we go. We're getting a start. Now I need to make an orangey colour. So I'm going to add oh, too much of the red. Right. Let's add a bit more. There we go. Now we're going to get a nice kind of orangey colour. I'm moving about all over the place because I just want there to be a lovely mix of these kind of oranges, reds, greens. Um, so I do want some red, but maybe that is a tad bright. Let's take a bit of brown and tone it down a little bit. That's better. So the good thing is that there's not really a wrong way of doing this, which is why I thought it would be nice for our paint calm because we're just letting the colors mix and mingle of their own accord. And I'm just going to keep kind of mixing things up on my palette here so that I get lots of colours going on. Nothing's uniform or the same. I hope that makes sense. Oh, look at those glorious colours. Wonderful. Let's get a bit more of this colour down here. And a bit more of this red that I added a little bit of brown to. Only because otherwise it it, it just looked a little bit unnatural. Oh, I am quite liking that. Right. I also need to mix up a green. So let's get... Oops, stay still. Let's get some yellow over here and then we'll add some of the cobalt blue so that we get some, some green and of course once we've got some of the paint down then we can do a bit of wet and wet with that. I didn't I didn't wet all of my leaf first today. I could have done, you could have done if you wanted. Um I think I just wanted to do it slightly differently. There. Should we add a bit more of a pop of red over here? 
Right, now that I've got everything down, I just need to make sure I'm happy with my, with how it's kind of turned out. Do I want to add, like, I feel like there should be a bit more yellow in here. Yeah, I think I like that better. And then that's just, and I quite like the contrast. I mean, it's still wet, so it's quite hard for you to see. But I also need to get this, this stalk in. Stem. Gosh, I always call them stalks, don't I? You all know what I mean, though. There we go, so we've got our little stem in. I'm just going to try and bring that up, even though it's got a bit of a shine on it, so that you can see how lovely all those colours, and you can see it moving about even where I've got quite a lot of water on the, on the paper. But that is how I like to do my um, painting quite a lot of water and I think I need to just define this edge a bit more there we go right whilst it's still wet whilst it's still wet I think I'm going to try and get some of these little lines in to kind of define the The leaf shape. Yeah, we don't want anything too um, too bold. I just want a few lines that help us. To define it more as a leaf so that's where this ink tent pencil came in really quite nicely before but sadly i did it after the paint was dry i think this is much better doing it while the paint is wet to be honest i think that is a lot better so i need this uh to dry but that is really quite wet there Well, let's dry the bottom bit and see how we go. Wow, look at that now. I did have to be really careful where I'd got quite a lot of water 
in the paint. So I held the um, heat gun quite far away just so that it didn't uh, end up splatting everywhere. But, I mean, we've got a really nice, really nice effect going on here. And I love the emergence of all of these colours. So um, I'm very happy with how that's turned out and the use of the ink tent pencil. I think that's come out really, really nicely. So now to do some background then. Okay, so I am now going to wet the background carefully going around my leaf shape so this is going to be the tricky bit really going around everything but whether we had done it first or last we were still going to have this problem so and to be fair my water is slightly dirty so I can actually see where I've been it's not a bad thing because I'm going to be using a darker colour for the background. Okay, let's keep moving our way round carefully. So um, I think the lovely thing about autumn is that the colours are just so, they're just so splendid. <laughs> and that's why I really love doing paintings that have, you know, are autumn uh, based because it's just that the colours are, yeah, they're just so bright. And I guess one of my favourite colours, um, and it's not a Michael Harding, uh, is the Daniel Smith Aussie Red Gold. I think that is a superb colour. I didn't use that today, but I do quite often when I start doing um, more kind of autumn paintings. So that's nearly there, so that we've got a damp, oh no, we've got this bit to go, oh and that bit there. Okay, let's just get this bit done. You can see why I like these paintbrushes, because they really do when I need them to, even though they're a big size, they go to the most gorgeous point on the end. Okay, now I'm going to mix up. Um, let's go with the cobalt blue. Where am I going to put this? Let's just put it there, it'll be fine. Cobalt blue, and obviously there was something else there on the palette, but it doesn't matter and my burnt sienna in fact we'll add a bit of that green in that i made yeah and i just want to get this kind of very brown background in and yeah I'm just going to drop in anything that's around on my palette just to ring some changes I need to go a bit closer there I think let's see how good my point of my brush is Whoa, there we go. Lovely. So let's 
So this bit you just need to take a bit of time over. Um, but I think it's worth having some kind of um, background for your leaf. Make it pop a bit more. Which is why I've kind of gone for a brown, earthy kind of colour. And today you'll notice I didn't bother taping my paper down. Because it's quite a small piece of paper, it's quite manageable. And I wanted to go right to the edge of my paper today. I think this colour is working out really nicely to emphasise the, the leaf. Gosh, I've gone quite quiet because it's it's quite intricate getting in the in the gaps. Mm-hmm. Right. Ooh. Now what I'm going to do is take whatever is on my palette. <laughs> what fun. Um, make sure there's quite a bit of water there so that I can just do. I don't want it to go too much all over my um my leaf but I can sort that out if it does happen but I'm just going to be doing a little bit of splatting not even just with some water because I just want there to be um, a little bit of variation there in the um, background and yeah there we go take a bit of this red here and there use what's on my palette and it will all tie in together okay right that has to um, dry and um, let's just get my
Okay. So, ooh. Now, there are a few white bits around the edge here that I don't like. So, I'm going to find a few coloured pencils. Uh, let's see. Uh, this one's called Olive Yellow. It's a luminance, and I think that'll do for around this bit. Then I need kind of a ready brown colour. What's this called? Crimson Aubergine. Okay, we'll try you. Um, and then I need quite a bright red, really. Bright red. What is this called? Deep Scarlet. Okay, I'm going to have a go with those, although they don't look very sharp, do they? Let's just sharpen. So we've got some good points. Okay, let's give this a go. Just so that we are getting rid of those white bits around the edge. Yay, like magic. Right, now I need to move to, obviously you'll need to pick the colours that are going to work for around the edge of your leaf, if you've got what I've got going on here, which is just that kind of, you know, where it's, it's quite difficult to line things up completely. And I think that this is doing quite a nice job around the edge. Let's go back to our green for up here. On that little bit, but I don't think I need the. I only need the two. quite often you do get that kind of dark a bit round the edge of the leaf in any case and I might even add a little bit of green into my stem. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Well, I think that was quite a lot of fun and quite effective and a nice start to some autumny coloured paintings. So, gosh. There we are. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you will have a go yourselves. Obviously, you don't have to use the same materials as me, but, um, you know, it's it's just um, to give you an idea. And rather than have the leaf straight on, um, and I think I will probably complete this one as well. I think it's quite nice to have it 
you know, at an angle um, rather than slap bang in the middle. I think compositionally it's going a bit more diagonal and looks um, slightly better. Um, yeah. OK, well, thank you so much for watching. And um, I do hope that you're all enjoying our lovely paint calm on a Friday transition into the weekend with something that is just a little bit of fun, a little bit um, calming and relaxing and hopefully not too difficult to do. All right. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay calm. And I'll see you next time. All right. Bye-bye for now.